finally come into the grounds of this lovely church. It is a Norman church. Uh, I've known about it as a kid. We've actually been here on school trips. But I just want to have a, a walk around and have a look at some of the features that are question about churches. Why they're absolutely necessary to have the things I point out. You know, firstly, like a lot of churches, have these rather strange figures. And if I pull out and move along a bit. There's another one there. What I quite often talk about, not only in church videos, but the buildings. And that's the cavity walls that they have. And the cavity walls that they have, I think for a purpose, because although, I've had a quick look, there's not many around this church. But the air vents in these cavity walls are everywhere. But we'll just... <coughs> <coughs> Don't be disturbing anybody, we'll just try and have a, a little wander around. It's the War Memorial. Let's move around the side a bit. It's an absolute beautiful place, it really is. We're a bit obscured by the trees on the tower here, but you can get the general idea of the normal design and normal construction. Some really strange gravestones. I could do with Miss Havisham here. Uh, I'll link her channel below. She's very good at decoding what some of these uh, carvings are. There's another little one there. But anyhow, we'll move around a bit further. I mean, you can hear the, the traffic, but just that lovely bit of tranquility uh, in the middle of a, a very busy village. Just have a little stop here and just have a look around at some of the features. Clear. It's not coming up very clear. Which is the general structure of what you associate with Norman churches. I've done a lot of work on the medieval period in Stockton, and there's rumours of this place being linked underground uh, to many places. The St Mary's Church in Stockton on Norton Road is one of the places. And funny enough, the research I'd done on Stockton's Manor House, Bishop Pudsey's Manor House, there was actually, I've heard rumours that there's tunnels from this place heading off up to that way, which is in the direction of Carlton. These are the things that really really interests me. First of all we have another charming little character there on the side but I've got them both in the shot there. These things. It's what I call surplus to requirements. 
you know, it's that is to me looks to be a little more than a lightning conductor. It really does. An antenna of some sort. We come across the top, it's the almost like cattle bat battlements. Then we're up to the tower. I don't believe that that clock, but I think it's an early 1800s job that. It's not part of the original build. And we seem to have another antenna up there, look. See where that one's connected. So these antennas on churches I have problems with. Not problems with, just I ask these questions but I, I never get any answers really on my videos. Uh, just come across this little fella here. No, nope, the light's not very good on that. Ah, that's a bit better. But see, the thing is, these type of things, and the same designs, you'll find on other churches, but not other churches in this area. And what about in Europe? You'll find the same designs. It's, it's strange. really is. Quite often on churches, the ones built in Victorian times, you quite often have figureheads on there, but there is none on this church. I mean, just for the peace and tranquility of the place, it's absolutely lovely. Just have a little quick wander around the sides. Thing me and Miss Havisham have talked about. It seems strange having grapes so close to the building. But we'll just have a wander around. While I'm here, I'll just have a quick look up there. Because again, two in the same shot. You know, that little beastie. And then the surplus to requirement bits. You know, why is that necessary for a church? I don't believe it's for ornamentation. That's just my belief. Right, just while we're here, and the sun's shining on it. We'll be able to get a view of the other corner here. That's just the same. Strange things to be putting on a, a church. House of love and families. I mean, it would terrorise any bloody kid. You know, looking up and seeing these things when they're coming into church on a Sunday morning. Sorry for that. Just somebody passing, I'll just move around, cover the graveyard until they go past. See, these make no sense at all to me. You know, graves. There. Or maybe you not know, there, maybe they're covering up one of the entrances to this place, bottom entrances. Because I do believe there is a, a lower level to this place. And this oh, I can never get my head wrapped around these iron railings and why they're necessary. Uh, there's many uh, thoughts out there why why they put them there originally, but uh, you know I'm not sure with myself. But we'll just move around a bit out the sun. <coughs> and if 
I'm going to just step back a bit. I'll be able to get uh, some of the interesting features in. What I call interesting features anyway. Uh, and that's these things here. As I quite often mention about in videos, support columns. You know, that wall is not in need of any support. It's not high enough. These originally had a purpose, a use. But what I'll go up and show you on the tower. I think they are a later date. The clocks, 1800s, early 1800s. I've already shown you the wires coming down from that one. We move along to the other corner. But there's nothing on the top of that one. Right, we'll just have a quick blast around this. Uh, one of the things I noticed. Inspection covers. Quite often for drainage, but also around these types of buildings, it's inspection to inspect the walls of the outer layer that's below the ground. There isn't much on this side really, but <laughs> that is the thing that out of this church that I've seen so far outside that really interests me. Uh, because I do believe that is going down to the low level and air bricks that I mentioned all these churches are double thickness walls they have usually on some churches you can see them there's rows and rows going around the building of air vents so I'd really like to know why these cavity walls are so important. Uh, the same type of cavity walls I'm talking about, you can actually see on Whitby Abbey if you go there. But you look at that brick there. It's where one of the air vents will have been. New brick put in. There is a little one down there as well. See, there's another one. No, there's nothing to be seen in there. I do have a little measuring stick that I usually bring out with me. So I can actually poke in them holes and see how deep, uh, how wide the cavity is. But we're back round to the front again. There's another where I would call where there will have been an air vent. I think there's actually one back there as well. Uh, anyhow, just move around for the last bit. Get you an overall shot of the church. Uh, and I'm going to go and have a walk along the, the headstones to see if I can find any squirrels. But this is beautiful St Mary's Church on Norton Green. Uh, and just while I sign off, before I sign off, See the grey wire and coming down from that corner. Not 
turn any. It's in use now. But that's all four corners. Anyhow, thanks very much for watching. I'm heading off in that direction. And I hope to catch you again soon. Bye.